For this debate, I'm adding my thoughts to what my colleagues from Lakeland and Provence have already pointed out is wrong with Bill C-21's wrong-headed idea of firearms policy. The member for Lakeland, who serves as the Shadow Minister of Public Safety, has done an incredible job in exposing many of the fallacies and misconceptions in how this Liberal government deals with firearms. After doing so in this House, she received a shockingly bad partisan response from the Minister of Public Safety. That says it all right there for how they're handling this important issue. Simply put, this Liberal government proposes to take firearms from cooperative, law-abiding citizens while doing nothing to stop the flow of illegal guns to dangerous criminals and gangs, where the crisis is coming from in the first place. Of course, violent crime with illegal firearms is happening in Canada and has been a growing concern for certain cities especially. There's a lot more to say about the alarming rise of rural crime as well, which has to do with a completely different set of circumstances for citizens and law enforcement. Uh, but for today, I'll focus on a basic principle, which this Liberal government is totally missing. Instead of targeting law-abiding Canadians and firearm retailers, the government should be investing in police, anti-gang and gun units, and the CBSA to provide law enforcement with all the resources they need to stop illegal smuggling operations and get dangerous criminals and gangs off our streets. This is the common sense approach which would proactively save lives and prevent crime. The member from Kingston and the Islands in his speech before me indicated that rather than deal with high rates of crime, we should instead just ban guns and that all crime will magically stop. This is the dangerous mentality that this government has when dealing with crime. Rather than deal with the actual problem, they choose to make a splashy announcement that sounds like they are doing something, but in reality, they continually harass law-abiding gun owners who are the most highly vetted citizens in Canada. And that is exactly the problem with what they have presented in Bill C-21. They are not directing the necessary effort to where expert advice and data indicate it should be going. If we are not keeping illegal guns out of the hands of dangerous criminals, then nothing will change. If there is any real hope of better protecting the public from these threats, we must focus on stronger enforcement and on deterrence of criminal activity, gangs and illegal gun trafficking. That is what it will take for any new firearms policy to be effective. This is what the experts and professionals are telling us. It is what police departments across Canada are saying when discussing this legislation. And I'm going to offer a few quotes here from a few prominent members of those respective forces. The Toronto Police Services President Mike McCormick said the following, and I'll quote, there's no way in my world or any world I know that this would have an impact on somebody who's going to go out and buy an illegal gun and use it to kill another person or shoot another person. Toronto Staff Inspector Mike Earl noted that a handgun ban is ridiculous and doesn't address the actual problem of criminals shooting up the city. If those people aren't obeying the laws that are already in place, why would they obey a ban? The Winnipeg Police Inspector Max Waddell said, while a ban on all guns might seem like a common sense approach, banning guns wouldn't necessarily stop gun violence. I'll draw a parallel, illicit drugs are also banned. Yet we see dramatic increases in challenges around methamphetamine because it's that supply and demand force that causes individuals to obtain these firearms, whether it's to protect their drug trade, prevent harm, to use it for extortion, whatever the criminal element is needing these guns for. And I'll end quotes there. So there are many more quotes from professionals, people that the government clearly failed to consult while drafting this legislation, or else they would have reconsidered a full-scale ban on handguns. If, if you think about it for a moment, it's a bizarre move for how they want to set up such a ban, and it really shows the major flaw with their entire program. They are creating conditions on federal firearms licenses to restrict handgun storage or transport within municipalities that have passed such bylaws. These bylaws would effectively be conditions on licenses, which means that it only targets lawful Canadians who already have the paperwork and are complying with the rules. So all this provision does is add more red tape and regulations for law-abiding Canadians subject to change from community to community, depending on whether or not a particular municipality has passed the bylaw. This is nothing but redundancy and ineffective, and we have mayors who have already spoken out against this bizarre legislation. I'm going to quote Mayor Don Iveson the, from, from Edmonton. It's not the direction we would go in to pursue a city-specific ban when the issue of the flow of these weapons and their ties to particularly drugs and organized crime is much more than a municipality by municipality issue, end quote. And he makes a good point. You know, I'm all for the division of powers and decentralized government, but when it comes to tackling gun crime and illegal guns, there needs to be a consistent and national approach. The mayor of Halifax, Mike Savage, points out what you'd think would be obvious 
but clearly it's not. He questioned whether a handgun ban would successfully counter gun violence in his city because, quote, a lot of them are not registered weapons, unquote. And these are the same handguns used by criminals. And further to his point, these are firearms, and what he's referring to is that they're not obtained legally. We need to focus on a cost-effective gun control program that is designed to keep guns out of the hands of criminals, while at the same time respecting the rights of law-abiding Canadians to own and use firearms responsibly. The reality is that at least 80% of guns used in Canadian gun crimes are illegally smuggled in from the United States, meaning that municipal regulations on law-abiding firearms owners will not change much. Why isn't the government focusing on the main supply for gun crime in this country? If they would have cons consulted those who are dealing with gun crime on the front lines, this bill would be significantly different. And you know, some of the measures that we all, I think, support in this house are gonna be some mandatory minimum sentences for criminal use of firearms, although the government is moving to, to remove some of those. You know, we already have strict monitor, or we already have strict uh, processes for people who go in to buy firearms. You know, they're, they're, again, I referenced earlier in my speech that they're among the most highly vetted citizens in Canada because of the process that it takes to acquire uh, the certification to be able to, to acquire and possess a firearm. And, you know, it was one, of, one of the most important elements that this bill fails to address is putting more law enforcement officers on our streets dealing with the illegal guns and gangs that plague our cities. Lastly, a strange part of the legislation has caught many of my constituents off guard with the pro prohibition of the importation, exportation, and sale of all non-regulated air guns that look like modern firearms. In case members and other parties, especially the governing Liberal Party, were not aware, airsoft guns, they're not real firearms. You don't have to be afraid of them. They are intentionally designed for, for role-playing or, or for, for playing uh, for games or for just even just simply for, for practice in a controlled environment. Under Bill C-21, virtually all airsoft guns in Canada will be banned based on their muzzle velocity as well as their similar look to real firearms. Basically, the government wants to ban a hobby enjoyed by thousands of Canadians, including many of their own constituents. In all seriousness, this is more than the Liberals being killjoys. This will affect the real jobs and livelihoods of our fellow Canadians. According to Airsoft in Canada, the Canadian airsoft market is worth 100 million and more than 260 Canadian businesses are linked to the paintball or airsoft community. Distributors and retailers are left unsure as to what to do with both their current stock and stock on order because all of it would be rendered worthless immediately if the government goes through with their ridiculous ban. There's also a lack of clarity on how this would be enforced. Will they be confiscated or is the government planning a costly buyback plan for these airsoft guns as well? With this example, it cannot get any clearer that Bill C-21 is not serious about tackling gun crime at all. Sadly, this is a superficial response they are offering to Canadians, full of distractions and empty rhetoric. And Canadian lives are at stake here. The government had an opportunity to actually listen to the experts who have all come to agree that any legislation tackling gun crime must be directed at criminals and gangs. But they have chosen to ignore data-driven policy so that they can try to score cheap political points. This is something my Conservative colleagues and I cannot play along with. We will continue to demand real action on gun crime so that all Canadians can live in peace and security. This can and should be done while we are fully respecting their rights and freedoms under the law. And there's one other point I just want to address here, Madam Speaker. And I actually, I addressed this uh, when I spoke to the budget here earlier this week. And that's uh, one of the biggest discrepancies that we do face here in Canada continues to be the difference between urban and rural Canadians. And this particular gun ban, it, it particularly hits at the lives of, of rural Canadians as well, because, you know, a lot of the firearms that, that were banned by the order and council, you know, a lot of these are, are tools that were used by, by ranchers, by farmers. They're, 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 they're actually necessary to their day-to-day -day operations in, in that they help to, uh, to deal with pests. It helps them to protect their, to, uh, protect their herds, protect their livestock. So there is actually some real need for, for some of the, the, the firearms that were banned by the order and council. And, and to arbitrarily use the, the bore diameter and, uh, and even the muzzle velocity that the government has chosen uh, just really doesn't make any sense because it directly impacts those people who are using them for common sense purposes and reasons. 